Well, it's been a wet and windy weekend. It literally rained for two days solid. And the ground is, well, it's okay. It's still a bit on the wet side, but there's plenty to do. And now I'm starting to think about how long it is till the growing season really gets going. Or should I say the sowing season? I'll show you the wind damage. You not some of the fairly extensive damage that was done to this polytunnel over the weekend. You can get a view of how it's been literally ripped apart. I'll take you around so I look. So my raspberries have been blown over once before, but there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six blown over. So I'm gonna scoop up what's landed on the membrane, put it back in, and I probably need to add a bit more soil. I've got an idea for that. You know these green polytunnels, they're a really good value. But if you're in a windy area, this is the risk. And this has stood the test of time for the last year and a half, but as soon as that wind got up under it and it started to weaken in places, then that was it. It was over. And you can see how there's been a bit of a repair here. And unfortunately, the wind was just too much for it. It's such a shame. But you can get replacement covers and the frame of course is still good so hopefully that won't be too expensive and too big a job for them but it is a shame and this year they've also had quite a lot of glass come out of their greenhouse and they had to remove the rest because of course once the glass goes the wind gets in and blows out even more so ah polytunnels they can be quite expensive but in my experience if you get one of the traditional tough polythenes and you secure the base well then they can last for years and years and years i'm just going to be fairly careful with these because if they've started to root i don't want to disturb them too much there really isn't enough soil in here. So I've got a plan. The bigger buckets managed to stay up, as you can imagine. And that should make it look clear to me. But they need more in the base. Right. And these two have gone over twice. Pretty much everything on an allotment has a good use. And these molehills have certainly got no cooch grass in them or any bindweed. And therefore they're gonna make good compost or soil to go in those pots. So I'm just gonna scoop this up. There's gonna be more than enough here. This is Vesuvius. I've never seen a molehill on the plot quite as big as this one. But I'm going to get a whole barrow load of soil to go in those raspberries with absolutely no effort at all. That's a good thing. Looks gorgeous. There we go. So thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Mole for saving me a lot of effort this morning. I'll just fill every one of these up, if I can, to the brim. And then they'll be ready for planting, which hopefully won't be too long. 
I can get them into the ground. Right, I'll carry on with this. So I'm going to get my bare-rooted apple tree and plum tree in today. And one or two of you have said, shouldn't be too much problem getting into this garlic bed. We just want to make sure we don't disrupt it too much. But I think I'm going to put it pretty much central and just carefully dig a hole. And I want to leave this cat protection on. So I don't want to pull it off of the garlic because it's going to serve a purpose throughout the year. Right, missing at all. I need a hoe. Right, I'm just going to break the surface. It's very easy. There we go. And now I'll just give myself a reasonable hole to get the roots in. And I need to open the packet and see how deep they are. But I'm going to try and be fairly clinical about this hole so I don't disturb the garlic. He says disturbing the garlic. Right. Let's see. All right, this is going to be the apple tree. Okay, here we are. So this is a Cox's orange pippin, which I got for the very reasonable price of six pounds. And I know a couple of you asked me where that was, and I put it in the comments of the video where I showed you I bought them. And a few of you have made use of that offer, I'm pleased to know. Right. As you can see, it's a fairly small tree, this one. The plum is significantly more substantial. And it comes in a wrapped root, which is covered in cling film. So we'll get that cling film off, which comes off pretty easy. And I think it's been sort of wrapped also in some compost, which just enables it to store for a while. And these will keep for a long time because they're obviously in the shop a long time. Right, I'm going to do this over the bed. It's quite fiddly, especially with gloves on. Should have taken these off, I think. Right, I think the root is turned round and pointed up in the air. There's a bit of compost in there, which we'll have. There we go. Get rid of that in a minute. And there is the root system. And it's also sort of compacted with a bit of soil. So I'm going to just tease it open a little bit. It's quite narrow, so I think it'll go down in here quite well. And I want to get it, there's the graft, and there's about two and a half, three inches below it. So I want to get that so that the graft is above the ground. And that the tree is relatively straight. I've got to go down a bit more actually. Maybe one more. There we go. Right, to get it straight, it needs to be like that. Pull the soil in around it. And then firm it in. Just making sure it stays straight all the time. That's gone in exceedingly well. I'll just cover that gully I've made with the soil. Push down once more. And the graph there is about, about two and a half inches above the ground. I can bend this wire back now. And that will protect it from cat issues. There we go. And although it is still winter, I will 
just give that a little bit of a water and not much because there's been plenty of moisture in the ground over the last few days. Get that organized. Right, I'm going to leave that on there. No, I'm not. I'm going to take it off. I'll remember that it's Cox's Orange Pippin because it's on the video. I keep all these labels in a folder in the shed just so that if I want to refer to them later on I can. There we go. And now I'm going to put a stake in the ground because these trees, they will move around in the wind, especially in the winter months, and that will loosen the roots. So I'm off to find a suitable stake. Continuing the theory of regenerating things or recycling them, these are old windbreak, well, canes, poles, and I've started to use them in this area and gradually I'm replacing all the old twigs and bits of wood I've used for these rather nice looking poles. So I tended to put it to the right. I'm going to try and avoid this garlic. And that's a fairly sturdy cane. And then I'm just going to tie in this bit of cord and I'm going to do a figure of eight and it just gives it a bit of support. In fact, I think because it's a very thin one, I'm going to just tie a very gentle knot just to make sure it doesn't escape the cord. There we are. That just puts a little bit of tension on it, not much. And I can always change that for something that won't rub quite as much when I can find something. Right, just cut the ends off of that. There we go. And that'll just make sure it doesn't move around too much. Okay, that's one in. I need to thread this garlic back through the wire. There we go. Same with this one. They're a little bit flimsy at this time of year, so I don't want to damage them. Okay, so this apple tree, unfortunately, has got canker and needs to come out. So I think I'm going to get the fork just to lift it. him out. And I'm going to put the plum straight in here. It's a very substantial plant tree. So let's get the top off of that. And have a look at him. So the roots are treated in exactly the same way and the top of the tree has been clipped by whoever prepared it for packing. Obviously there's a limit to the size that they can put in a pack. I think I'll take that label off now as it's very easy and get this off of the root. And there you can see the root system just there's a root that's fallen off there. I'm not going to worry too much about that sort of thing. And there's plenty of small roots that are active. Right. Okay, while I'm down in this bed, I'm just going to remove the few weeds that have started to grow. It's always a sign that spring is on the way. Put them down there. Just get down nice and deep. Uh, 
And with this tree, the graft is very much higher, so I can afford to go down quite low. Although I think that's probably enough. Get it close to that cane. And then just bury that root and compress the soil. So this is a plum tree called Opal, which is exactly the same variety as the one over to the left there, which I'm hoping will do things for pollination. We'll see. There's another weed that can come out. Right. I'll just cover over the surface. And then we'll tie this one in, just as we did the other one. This one's a lot more sturdy. Uh, I think we'll have the knot the other side. And we'll have it up about there. There we go, just a little bit of tension on it. Job done. It's nice to be back to a full quota of fruit trees and make sure that I'm making maximum use of the space that I've got. While I've got these windbreak poles out, there's a couple of bushes that need a bit of support, so I'm going to do that while I'm working with them. So this is one of the bushes. In fact, this is a white currant, which I took as a cutting, I think probably two years ago now, and then planted it when I was doing the fruit garden. I'm gonna take the opportunity to get any weeds out before they get even more established. There's a bit of grass growing in here. Get that out. This stuff is encroaching from the bank, which is a bit of a pain. But I'll have a clean-up session as it gets a bit warmer and make sure that any weed growth that's around this membrane is removed. It's a bit of a tiresome job, to be honest, but it does need to be done. It works extremely well in terms of guarding all these main areas, but the edges you can never really fix. And even where they overlap, the weeds come through. And surprisingly, even where you put a stake through it, the weed finds a way. Right, that's pretty much cleared up. I've got a rose bay willow herb in here that is very tenacious. Right, so this bush is really leaning over and I'm gonna put the stake behind it. I think I might need a hammer on that. So I'll go and get my Thor's hammer. Thanks to everybody for the, well, Viking type responses in the comments from my last video. Did give me a chuckle. should do it. Right, now much like I did with the apple and plum tree, I'm going to pull this bush back to the cane. I need to find a good place that's strong to fix it. And then I shall pull it back with the tension of the string. Oop. There we go. I need another pair of hands for this, really. It's not bad. A bit more. There we go. I did break one of the branches when I did that. It's not going to come to any harm. If anything, it'll fuse back together in my experience. Right, that's that one. I've got another one down the bottom. What have 
And as you can see, this one is exactly the same, leaning over. And I think I'm going to have to sort of gather the branches up with this one. Let's see what we can do. All right. And there is a risk with this one that I will snap a branch or two, but I'm afraid that's going to have to be the case. There we are, that's come together quite well. And just tie that off. There we go. It's quite awkward. I think I want it up a bit higher. There we go, that's a bit better. Right, try that. And we'll see how it does. Hopefully, it'll stay in that sort of position after a while. Well, I'm sad to say that there is unrest in the community. A number of people are becoming a little bit, well, unsettled by the remaining cabbage. And I have pointed out in the comments that this has been an ongoing source of food for the chickens. But in the interest of keeping the peace, it's coming out and the chickens are going to have half each, half to the silkies and half to the big hens. So it's a pretty amazing cabbage, this. It's been slug resistant and still to this day, the slugs are not eating it. It's variety filled a kraut. And I am definitely growing it again this year, but be warned, it is so big. You don't need more than, well, probably four or five, certainly in a bed like this. So let's take him out. He's got a huge root, I'm sure. There we go. And to be honest, it's been frozen a couple of times, but it's still absolutely fantastic. I'm going to cut this off. I brought these to cut it. They're not going to cut it. I'll get my spade and we'll take the stalk off and cut through the center and have a look. Right, don't want to waste any cabbage this way. Right, here we go. Stalk first, gone. Oop. Rolling cabbage. Now, let's see. See if I can get through the middle of this in one go. No, rubbish. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. What a fantastic cabbage. Chicken treats. Here you go, girlies. A bit of a treat. 